Do you think voters are aware that Australia has a legalised commitment to 80% of renewable energy by 2030? I mean, does the coalition support that? Mate, I sometimes think some of my colleagues don't realise this. <laughs> but, uh, yes, we, you know, we've got these, these now in law uh, commitments. In saying that, I mean, a lot of these laws... Uh, can't really be enforced any any way, but they're there on our law books, our, our renewable energy targets, our our targets under under Paris, of course, uh, for for forty three percent by twenty thirty, and, and net zero is crazy idea of net zero by twenty fifty. Uh, I mean, notionally, we are still saying we are still saying in the coalition that we support only a, a twenty six to twenty eight percent reduction emissions by twenty thirty. Yet uh, the Paris Agreement now has us locked in to a forty three percent cut. And under the Paris Agreement, you can't go backwards. The agreement, we signed, we signed it. In fact, Greg Hunt and our former government signed it. You can't go backwards under that agreement. So our position now in the coalition is a bit incoherent because we're saying we only want 28% by 2030. We're saying we support the Paris Agreement. Those two positions are now inconsistent. We've got to choose between them. Either we up the emissions reduction is crazy, 43% reduction that the Labor Party wants, or we get out of the Paris Agreement. And I'm very much on the side of the ladder, Alan. This agreement is just rubbish, completely rubbish. just that provision alone. But you see... Shows uh, how silly it is. So see, let's Matt, get out of it. Let's get out of all of these things and do what's best for Australia. See, Matt, I've had two government people on here and one coalition person. They'll remain unnamed. And then I played dumb and asked the question. I said, oh, what's the problem here? I mean, you don't want coal? Oh, yeah, yeah, you don't want coal. So what is the problem carbon dioxide? Oh, yeah, yeah, Well, why do you call it decarbonising, decarbonising the country? Carbon's different from carbon dioxide. Oh, well, 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 that's a sort of shorthand way. No, no, it's an accurate way. But however, if carbon dioxide's the problem, I say to them, how much of it is there out there if it's causing a problem? Not one of them could answer. Absolute sorry, I don't know. And then I say, well, look, it's 0.04% of the atmosphere. How the hell could yeah, this be causing... Parts per million. Yeah. How could this be causing the problems yeah. that are attributed to carbon dioxide? So, Matt, you're a scientist. Why does the coalition go down this dumb road of this climate change hoax caused by carbon dioxide, which is 0.04% of the atmosphere, only 3% of it, is contributed to by human beings, and little old Australia is 1.3% of 3% of 0.04%. Do they actually think we're stupid? Someone does. They must. Well, I don't say I'm a scientist. I'm an economist, which is, a, I suppose, a poor man's science. But <laughs> I read enough to know what you're saying is exactly true. Uh, uh, that On top of that, of course, that carbon dioxide is only one of very many a uh, number of greenhouse gases. And, and I, I'll spell out my beliefs here, so to speak, and I don't know why we have to all state our beliefs on these sort of things. It's all very religious. But, yeah, I, I do think uh, it seems that greenhouse gases do warm an atmosphere. That's how the physical atmosphere of the earth works, and carbon dioxide is one of those greenhouse gases. But as you said, it's only it's only, uh, it's only only 0.004% of the world's atmosphere, and, 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 it, and it's uh, only a very small percentage, only a few percent of actually all the greenhouse That's gases, it. most of which That's is it. water vapour. That's it. And so... And so the, 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 the scientific impact is here a very long stretch and it would seem to me that the extreme examples, and as I say, I'm not doubting that more carbon dioxide potentially warms the atmosphere, but it would seem that warming is nothing to panic about. It's Correct. certainly not going to lead Correct. to, as some, uh, some of our political leaders suggest, that human beings will become extinct uh, from this uh, man, doubling of carbon man. dioxide emissions. But see, did fact, the coalition... The direct the science... The Didn't science says the direct impact of a doubling of carbon emissions is about one degree Celsius increase mm. in the temperature, and that's really nothing really to worry about. But did the coalition support this legislation that we go to 80% of renewables by 2030? Now, it's law. Now, if I drive down the left hand, the right-hand side of the road, the police will arrest me because the law says you must drive on the left-hand side. So when the government breaks the law about 80%, of renewables well, by 2030, who gets arrested? Who gets no, punished? We didn't, we didn't support the we didn't support the government's targets. The government's uh, targets that went through, they did pass through the Senate, but we didn't support them. As I said earlier, we want to notionally we want to roll them back, but we can't. We can't under the Paris. We can't. We can't roll them back without leaving the Paris Agreement. So we've mm -hmm. got to choose. You got you got to make a choice here. Uh, but do you it, join but the, it, the Greta Thunberg radical climate oh, action stop train it. Or, do stop we, it. or do we jump off it? Wash, wash your mouth out, Greta Thunberg. I mean, honestly, the ch parents should be charged with 
child cruelty. Everywhere in Europe, governments, as you know, are backing away from this net zero. I mean, I, I quoted earlier in an editorial I did tonight on Alistair Heath in The Telegraph, from the London Telegraph, and he wrote, by any rational standard, Sunak, because Sunak's backing away, is merely being pragmatic and realistic, and banning pure mm. petrol cars in six and a bit years' time is a dangerously utopian policy that would guarantee chaos, mass impoverishment, power cuts and a popular revolution. Now, isn't this where we're heading with Bowen? Well, I, I do worry about that, Alan. I, I mean, I think eventually Australian people will wake up. It's just how many lessons in the school of hard knocks do we do we need to take? And, uh, you know, I, I don't want us to go through that uh, because it'll be very painful. People will lose their jobs. Uh, people will have their power cut off and they can't afford to pay their bills. Uh, and I suppose what I'm trying to do is, is warn about this impending train wreck and hopefully you know, put the brakes on this train before it gets there. And uh, so we don't have to go through that. And we can see what's going on in Europe. We've got that benefit. We can see the policies that Chris Bowen, that Anthony Albanese are implementing here are exactly the same as what they've tried in Europe. It's been an absolute disaster.